here at 1045theteam.com. We've been chronicling Kevin Herter, the Shenandoah basketball guard, the junior who helped lead the Plains into the New York State Class AA title, already raking in the offers. Notre Dame, Texas Tech, Baylor, Iowa, Creighton, Maryland, Miami, Marquette. A lot of marquee programs offering the 6566 6'6 guard. One of those teams that one of those schools that just came in with an offer for Kevin Herter is Syracuse, but it won't start until 2017. So they're basically asking Kevin to go to prep school for a year. Joining me today is contributing writer to Noon's Magician, a Syracuse Athletics blog. It's Ben Siegel. Ben, thanks for being with us. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You guys were the first that I saw to report that Syracuse had offered Kevin a scholarship offer for 2017. He will graduate from Shen in 2016. So basically Syracuse will ask him to go to prep school for a season. Why is that? Yeah, that's basically what's going on right now. Um, well, obviously with the scholarship reductions and everything that's going on with the program, they just really don't have room for him right now. You know, he is six five six six one seventy, so he does have to develop. He does have to get bigger and stronger for the ACC game. But basically, you know, it, it's a it's a mixture of him developing physically and also they're just really not being room for him and him not being a priority recruit. So we're seeing these scholarship reductions really take an effect on Syracuse early on, right? Yeah, the uh, the main focus of the of the scholarship reductions right now are Syracuse. In the past, you could sign a guy like Kevin, who's a who's a typically you know right around a three or four year guy. Now, not so much, just because you want to go after, if you want to stay relevant and competitive in the ACC, you've got to go after these one-and-done type kids that are going to be there one, two years, and then take their talents to the NBA. Right now, going after and trying to sign a three-year, three- to four-year kid, it's just not in their best interest. Now, hypothetically, uh, tough to ask a kid to do this, but hypothetically, if Kevin wanted to, he could be a walk-on for a year and then still get the three-year scholarship, couldn't he? He definitely could. The only issue, and I was thinking about that, the only issue with that is is he has so many other big-time offers, Notre Dame, Maryland, um, Penn State. I mean, the list is going on and on. It just continues to grow. You know, So why would he want to go to Syracuse, pay fifty, you know, $50,000 a year when he could be going somewhere else, You know, get right around the same education for free and then play right away for certain schools? Not every school he would play right away, but, I mean, Syracuse right now, he's looking at probably, if you were to go there and, you know, walk on he probably wouldn't play as a freshman unless you know a few things happen and then just continuing you know he'd probably see a lot of time his junior year but depending on what other kids come in you know obviously with the top 10 class this year with two guards in it so it, it's just it's a tough situation but but walking on probably wouldn't happen can Syracuse expect him to wait that year as you said he's got all these marquee offers you also throw in Creighton Davidson Texas Tech Baylor Iowa, Siena, UAlbany, he's got at least 15, 20 Division One offers. Do you think Syracuse is running the risk of losing him by asking him to wait a year? I think they definitely are. Um, maybe Syracuse is kind of banking on the fact that if he's a Syracuse fan where it's a, it's a dream of him to play at the Dome in front of 30,000 for Coach Beheim. Um, but I was talking to you yesterday a little bit, and you know, obviously he's not, he didn't really grow up a big Syracuse fan. He was, he was really around the Siena program a lot, so... You know, I think they are, you know, kind of testing the waters there. And I think, you know, if I were Kevin, I don't, I don't know if I would wait. Um, unless you're a diehard Syracuse fan, why would, you know, why would you want to delay entering college unless it was already uh, a thought in your mind to go to prep school? And then Syracuse kind of does come back into play. But I mean, other than that, he's got some big time offers. I don't know if I'd want to delay college for another year. Kevin is a 6'5", 6'6", long athletic guard. He can shoot it from the outside. He can defend on the perimeter. would certainly look good in Syracuse's vaunted zone defense. What is it about his game or a player with his size, length, and skill set that makes him appealing to Syracuse? Well, I think exactly what you just said, you know, 6'5", 6'6", long athletic. You know, that's that's exactly what Michael Carter-Williams was because MCW, he wasn't very strong when he got to Syracuse. And, you know, he's put on more muscle at the NBA, but... You know, having Kevin at the top of the zone, forcing steals, forcing turnovers, a long guard that can shoot, it can penetrate, you know, a combo guard to play the one or the two. You know, I think everything there is great. And if Syracuse, if the scholarship reductions hadn't hit, you know, he'd definitely have an offer for 2016. And I think Syracuse would go at him a little bit harder. But, you know, they've obviously talked, and, and Kevin has obviously said going to prep school is definitely a consideration. Otherwise, I don't think they would have extended the offer. Because, you know, in a sense, the offer is a little bit disrespectful where it's, you know, we want you, but we don't want you bad enough to offer you for 2016 because there's other top priorities out there and top targets. 
that their game's more developed that Syracuse would love to sign right away. So waiting a waiting a year, I don't I don't think it's the worst thing for Kevin, but also it's it's hard to tell a kid, hey, don't go to you know Notre Dame, Texas Tech, all these other schools. You know, wait a year and then come to Syracuse. It's it's tough. Ben Siegel, contributing author to NoonsMagician.com, the SB Nation blog for Syracuse Athletics. You can find him on Twitter, at Syracuse B-Ball. You said, Kevin, not a high-priority recruiter, at least a high-enough priority recruit to offer right away. Who is Syracuse looking at that they want to get in in that class? Uh, they've got their top priority right now, Tyus Battle. He's a five-star guard out of uh, Jersey, and you know he's obviously the top recruit right now. And then you also have guys like uh, Gilbert, who's a four-star, five-star guard out of Georgia, who just announced that Syracuse is in his top five, and he plans to visit. But um, Tyus Battle has an official visit later this month at Syracuse, and they've been on him since his freshman year. They were the first big D1 school to offer him his freshman year. So with that connection, obviously he's the top priority because he's a one-and-done type kid. And uh, they've got other offers out that aren't as top priority. Um, They offered Kobe Simmons, who's a five-star guard out of Georgia as well. But that's kind of more of a long shot, it seems like, just because they've got, they were in late for Kobe, and he's got, you know, he can go anywhere in the country he wants. And then they've also offered Biggs, James Banks, Sadiq Keita. Um, so there's offers out there. Um, they really just don't have any more room or any leverage to offer for 2016 because it's getting to the point where they only have one spot left for the 16th class unless they get scholarships back after the appeal for the, for the uh, reductions. Ben, we'll get you out of here on this. This Syracuse team going to lose a lot heading into next year. They've also lost a couple of guys to transferring. Where do you see the Syracuse team in 2015-2016? Uh, next season, it's, it's really a toss-up. A lot of it depends on how Caleb Joseph plays. Um, you know, a guard that struggled this year that really wasn't expected to play big minutes. A lot of people you know, said, I think Sports Illustrated has him as one of the most disappointing players in the country, which I think is outrageous to say. Because he's a guy that was supposed to play, you know, five to ten minutes a game behind Tyler Ennis. And then Ennis, you know, Ennis, you know, leaves quickly for the NBA after one year. And you kind of put Joseph into a role that he wasn't expected to play in. So, um, you know, a lot depends. We, uh, you know, Syracuse does have Cooney for one more year. So they'll have Cooney for his, for his redshirt senior year. They'll have Benege, um, You know, the big bigs is going to be an issue just because you lose Christmas. So you've got a Boko, you've got... Um, Mustafa Jin coming in, you know, there's there's some definitely there's some holes, and especially with McCullough leaving early, which nobody expected um, after the torn ACL. So, you know, there's uh, there's some issues that they need to work out, but you know, they should be okay, and they've got a good class coming in. So, I expect them back in the NCAA tournament, but you know, it's obviously way too early to talk about that. Ben Siegel, contributing writer for NoonsMagician.com, SB Nation, Syracuse Athletics blog on Twitter at Syracuse B Ball. Today, you're talking about Kevin Herter, his chances of landing with the Orange in 2017. Syracuse has extended that offer for Ben. Thanks for being with us, and I'm sure we'll be talking to you again as a decision day nears uh, for Kevin Herter either way. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you.